Okay, stop. What is that? It is some kind of... of... That is a very big head. When we talk about our basic character personality types, one of the most common types that immediately comes to mind is the grumpy one. I mean, at any point in our lives, we've all come across grumpy people. Hell, I'm pretty sure we've all been that grumpy person ourselves from time to time. And because it's a personality almost anyone can relate to, it's no surprise that pretty much every group or team from almost any 80s cartoon and beyond has a said grump included in their lineup of characters. We've got Grumpy Bear from the Care Bears, Gruffy Gummy from the Gummy Bears, and Grouchy Smurf from Nestrumpf. Actually, let's go even further back. Oscar from Sesame Street, Grumpy from the Seven Dwarves, and my personal favorite, Donald Duck. I guess you get the point. But before we go any further, let's make a quick distinction. When I say grumps, I'm not referring to some a-hole. If there's anything common about all these characters I just mentioned, it's that despite having a rather rough and tough exterior and a constant penchant for complaining, most if not all of these grumps are better known for their softer and more lovable interior, which they do let show every now and then. Except Donald, of course. Now he's an asshole. <laughs> just kidding. And being one of the most prominent cartoons to feature one of the biggest cast of characters from the start, it's no surprise that the Transformers also and most definitely had their own version of the classic Grump. In 1984, a bunch of alien robots woke up from a billion years slumber to a new home called Earth. This, in a nutshell, is how the story of the cartoon series, The Transformers, began. Now, while a majority of the Autobot crew took an immediate liking to Earth and its inhabitants and welcomed the experience of establishing a new home, a few others weren't quite as happy. The Minibot warrior Gears was one of the few Autobots who never liked the Earth. In fact, he hated it and made sure everyone knew about it constantly. But his grumblings weren't exclusively about being shipwrecked on Earth. True to his grumpy character, Gears pretty much complained about everything, from how his wheels weren't properly aligned to the tune of a song playing on the radio. I guess you could say that he was the team's resident Debbie Downer. <laughs> but despite his seemingly unpleasant nature, his teammates actually found his endless rants quite amusing. They all knew that while he was truly homesick and longed to return to Cybertron, they believed that his complaining served a purpose and that was to encourage them to find the silver lining in what he was complaining about when they would all try and cheer him up. And talking about silver linings, Gears did have some abilities that he should have been happy about. First of all, Gears had infrared sensors which came in very handy at finding Decepticons lurking in the dark. And aside from being rather physically strong despite his smaller size, Gears also had the ability to fly, at least for short distances with the use of compressed air boosters on his feet. Of course, it's a rather awkward flight with severe limited maneuverability which more often than not made him an easier target in the air for his enemies. So yeah, just another thing for Gears to grumble about I guess. So growing up, because of their higher price point, I owned only a handful of actual Transformer toys. And most of the ones I had were on the smaller size like the Minibots. Of the six original Minibots though, I only had three, namely Brawn, Bumblebee, and Gears. And of the three, Gears looked the coolest. Unlike Brawn or Bumblebee, Gears' toy was the most compact and proportional, which is why I took an immediate liking to him. Of course, this was before I actually got into the cartoon, so I didn't really know what a sourball he really was. Speaking of which, at one point before settling on the name Gears, one of his working names was Sourball. Anyway, despite having such a distinct personality, Gears wasn't really featured much in the cartoon and was relegated to a background character with a few throwaway grumpy lines in an episode or two. Luckily though, he did have one specific episode centered around him, or more specifically, a special circuit board that he possessed inside his chest. And I have to say, it was one of my favorites. In the episode Changing Gears, Megatron and the Decepticons build this mega contraption called the Solar Needle to harness energy from the sun. And for some reason, the key component making the contraption work is a special circuit board that could only be found inside Gears. Ah, the beauty and creativity of 80s cartoon storytelling. So, they capture Gears and take out said circuit board from his chest and hook it up to their machine. Now in a funny twist, it turns out that the circuit board is the actual reason why Gears is such a grump. 
So once it's removed, he immediately turns into an impossibly cheerful and helpful robot. Gears becomes so altruistic that he can't even resist helping out Megatron collect Energon because, well, Megatron asked him to. <laughs> anyway, like almost all episodes go, Optimus Prime and company arrive just in time and manage to convince Gears to blow up the Solar Needle as a favor to them. The Decepticons retreat and all is good. Of course, in the end, after jokingly saying that they prefer the happier Gears, the Autobots hand back Gears' circuit board and the good old Grump is welcomed back into the fold. Actually, they leave him behind as he stands there complaining about everything else. After this quite memorable episode, like I said, Gears wasn't used very often, which ultimately might have worked to his advantage, as when the 1986 Transformers animated movie spelled the end for a number of his fellow Season 1 Autobots, Gears was nowhere to be found and thus wasn't killed off, at least in the final product. It's no big secret to many Transformer fans that one of the main objectives of the 1986 movie was to wipe the board clean of all the old characters whose toys had been discontinued in retail, to make room for newer, shinier Transformers and their toys. As such, initial drafts of the movie had even more of our favorite and familiar Autobots killed off in various violent ways, including Gears who, while defending Autobot City, was bombed into oblivion along with his fellow minibot Windcharger by the Decepticon Cyclonus. And while a dead Windcharger was shown in the actual movie, Gears was thankfully left out. In later drafts though, he was actually given a line during the battle for Autobot City, wherein, upon witnessing the formation of Devastator, he cries, We're finished! Ah! And while there isn't any more additional context to this line, it's safe to say that he was then killed off by the giant Decepticon. <laughs> Gear's voice actor, the legendary Don Messick, better known for voicing numerous classic characters from Hanna-Barbera, including Scooby-Doo, Astro, Boo-Boo Bear, and Ranger Smith, as well as Papa Smurf, actually recorded that specific line for Gears for the movie, and is listed in the end credits for it, even if ultimately it was left off the final cut. But possibly the most interesting thing about Gears is that very early on in the original Marvel Comics run, the third issue to be exact, the grumpy little bot actually makes an amazing human friend. His name? Peter Parker, better known as the Amazing Spider-Man. Yup, you heard that right, Spider-Man. In an attempt to most likely give the then brand new 4-issue limited Transformers series a boost, the writers actually threw in Spider-Man as a guest star. As the story goes, Megatron and the Decepticons hole up in a newly constructed fortress high up on a mountain with a human prisoner, Sparkplug Witwicky. And they are surrounded by the US military and various news reporters, including a certain Peter Parker from the Daily Bugle. Figuring that he would make more progress assessing the situation as Spider-Man, Parker bumps into Gears, who was sent on a scouting mission by Prime. After convincing Spider-Man that he is a good guy, by saving a bunch of reporters from being squashed by a tank, they strike up a nice partnership despite the wall crawler reminding Gears of his fellow Autobot Blue Streak with his non-stop talking. Gears then introduces Spider-Man to the rest of his fellow Autobots and then sets off to climb up the back side of the mountain to infiltrate Megatron's fortress and rescue Sparkplug. Thanks to Spider-Man's webs, both he and Gears make it to the top wherein together, they defeat an impressive number of Decepticons including Soundwave and his minions, up until they reach Sparkplug and unfortunately, Megatron, who blasts a hole under Gears' feet causing the Autobot and Sparkplug to fall. And while Spider-Man is able to save Sparkplug from certain death, Gears isn't as lucky as Spider-Man's webs and the Minibot's own compressed air boosters aren't enough to save him. So with a noble sign-off of mission accomplished friend to Spider-Man, and a fuck my life to himself, Gears plummets straight down to the ground. Okay, okay, so I may have embellished that last bit, but you know that's probably what was going on in his head. And while he was out of commission for some time, Gears does manage to survive and more importantly, gain the respect of Spider-Man. So yeah, how about that? Step aside, Firestar and Iceman, and make way for Spider-Man's newest amazing friend, the Autobot Grump, Gears. Anyway, aside from his not-so-pleasant demeanor, Gears also stood out because he had a rather unique and distinct appearance with his original cartoon design as he possessed a rather wide head. Naturally, his original toy looked nothing like his animated counterpart as it didn't even have a face. And it would be exactly 30 years later before we finally got an updated and more cartoonish accurate Gears toy. 
Despite being one of the first six minibots in the Transformers line, by 2014, Gears had actually lost whatever little clout he had in the overall Transformers mythos, and had been significantly eclipsed in popularity by another Transformer, Swerve, who initially started out as an obscure Gears repaint towards the latter half of the original toy line. But thanks to the IDW comics, the more cheerful and talkative Swerve had become one of the most popular character reinventions and breakout stars of the series. And because of that, in another ironic case of role reversal, this very first modern toy of Gears actually ended up being a repainted and retooled version of an originally released Swerve toy. As a result, this new Gears looked a little more... forced. <laughs> Anyway, before we go any further, I hope I won't get any complaints from you all when I switch gears for a bit and ask you all to like this video and subscribe to my channel. It's a simple thing that will go a long way in helping me out. And if you already did, then thank you. So where were we? Okay, so more toys. Let's rewind a little bit to the year 2009 so we can talk about another toy that while definitely not the same as the G1 character, was also named Gears. Let's call it an homage. Despite not actually being included in any of the live-action movies, a live-action Gears toy was released. And while looking almost nothing like the original character, he did possess some nice callbacks to the G1 Gears. Namely a red and blue color scheme in his robot mode and a literal gear design on the hood of his alt mode. Of course, just to give Gears another thing to complain about, it's worth noting that this Gears was yet another repaint of a previously released movie character toy, the Decepticon Stockade. <laughs> Anyway, over the years, some third-party companies also tried their luck coming up with their own version of Gears. In 2013, an early player in the scene, iGear, tried to make their mark by producing a line of chuggish, or maybe masterpiece style if you squint your eyes, versions of minibots to varying degrees of success. They gave us Brawn, Cosmos, Beachcomber, and of course, Gears. And while the first three I mentioned were pretty good for what they were, it was Gears that initially got me thinking that these guys were not the bots I was looking for. Despite having a rather cool gimmick of being able to easily switch faces between masked, like the original toy, to unmasked, like the cartoons, Cogs was pretty underwhelming and awkward to transform, and in the end, I eventually sold it along with all my other iGear mini-bots when the inevitable better options became available. In the same year, another company called SXS Toys released their version, oddly dubbed Continuously Variable, an overthought name that actually fit the rather overthought design of this toy, which looked more like Gears if he wasn't a minibot but a regularly sized car robot, or if he were on steroids. It was an admirable attempt by them, but an easy pass for me. Then in 2014, Make Toys released Cogwheel, and while he looked pretty cool, he transformed into a Cybertronian truck and really didn't seem to fit in any part of my collection, so I passed on him as well. Fortunately, in 2016, we finally got a more than adequate Gears from a then more seasoned company, Bad Cube, appropriately named Grump. Now, this was a toy that the real Gears would not have anything to complain about. He even came with a removable circuit board in homage to his soul starring episode, in case we preferred a happier Gears. Oh wait, actually there was something quite significant to complain about regarding this toy. Despite looking really good, as if he literally stepped out of the cartoon, for a minibot this thing was so over-engineered. His front half was pretty much a nightmare to put together and required the utmost level of coordination and patience. Still, excellent looking bot mode and alt mode and no other better option around meant that he had a lasting designated spot on my shelf for a long time. That is, until he didn't. <laughs> Fast forward to 2024, the year that I lovingly refer to as the gear year. Cause we didn't just get one, but two rather excellent versions of gears for the display. Okay, actually it turns out that the first one came out late, late 2023. But whatever, it still hasn't been a year as of this episode. So yeah, gear year. First up was Variator, from my go-to, favorite third-party company, Fans Toys. Just like iGear all those years ago amidst all their numerous releases, Fans Toys has been seemingly making it a point to put out their own lineup of minibots for our masterpiece collections. And after Brawn, Huffer, and Cliff, 
Gears finally got the fans toys treatment. Still waiting for Wind Charger fans toys. In all seriousness though, for the record, Bad Cube's Grump remains an excellent representation of Gears for any masterpiece display. It's just that, well in my opinion, Variator just beats Grump in every single way. Variator is superior in paint, finish, feel, construction, and surprisingly, in engineering. If there is any fair knock against fans toys, it's that their designs can be rather involved. But Variator is actually really fun and super easy. Barely an inconvenience. One of the best actually that they've come up with in some time. I'd even go as far as to say that he's one of the best Transformers fan toys has ever released, period. Gears. Anyway, the Gears goodness continues into 2024 with the Legacy United version for all mainline collectors out there. It's as if it's the ongoing trend. Hasbro was also seemingly intent on giving us updated and improved versions of the minibots as well. In the past few years, they also gave us a Brawn, Huffer, Cliff, and now finally a Gears. And still waiting for Wind Charger. Come on! Sorry for that, but some bots just get no love. But back to Gears. While far from perfect, this guy is also a really well-made and fun toy. At the very least, this Gears is now a unique and original mold, not a quick repaint or retool of Swerve. So there's that. Definitely nothing to complain about here. So while there haven't really been that many Gears toys made through the years, he's more than made up for it with these two latest releases. Who would have thought that the old Grump would be a major highlight for me this year? Twice! I guess it's true what they say. Everybody does love a good Grump. Which is more than I can say for another minibot who is one hell of a cocky and delusional dude. Feel free to jump over here to watch more about him. Or if you want other non-related Transformers stories, you can find them over here. Either way, thanks for watching and I hope you come back for more.